this message, we're going to study the millennium, the thousand years that will be spent with Jesus. In this message, we're going to deal with when does the millennium start? What takes place during the millennium? What will happen after the millennium? And why is the millennium so important? Millennium simply means a thousand years, thousand years. What will take place during the thousand years? When will it start? And when will it finish? And why is this so important? The Bible says in Revelation chapter 20, and let's begin there, Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6, and this is where we see where the Bible speaks of the millennium. Revelation chapter 20 and verse 6. The Word of God says this, it says, Blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power, but they shall be priests of God and of Christ and shall reign with him, reign with Christ a thousand years. The Bible says that those who will live with Christ, those who will be with Jesus will reign with Christ for a thousand years or for a millennium. So every one of us, who will live with Christ will be with him for a thousand years. What we're going to do in this study, we're going to give four, we're going to give five events that take place to start the millennium. So after we're going to go through five events at the fifth event, we're going to know when the millennium starts. Then we're going to give four events that take place during the millennium. And then after that, we're going to give six events that close the millennium again. So we're going to do five events at the end of the fifth is when the millennium will start, when we will spend a thousand years with Jesus. Then we're going to do four events that take place during the millennium. And then we're going to show six events that closes the millennium. Is that clear? All right. Let's begin with event number one of five to start the millennium. And at the end of the fifth event is when the millennium, the thousand years will start when the righteous will spend a thousand years with Jesus Christ. First Thessalonians, let's go there. Event number one. First Thessalonians, event number one of five before the start of the millennium. First Thessalonians chapter four. The Bible says in first Thessalonians chapter four, and let's look at verse number 16. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16, event number 1, to, 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 out of 5, to start the millennium, it says, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Verse number 15 says, For this we say unto you, by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. So the Lord will come down from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and the dead in Christ shall rise. When Christ shall come with that voice, that is the coming of the Lord. So event number one out of five, which starts the millennium, is Jesus will come. Amen? So the millennium will not start until Christ comes. Is that clear? So that's event number one. What is number two out of five to start the millennium? So Christ will come. And then the Bible says, let's go in our Bibles to the book of Revelation. Revelation 20. Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says this. Revelation 20 and verse six. Now this is event number two. So when Christ comes, what happens next? It says in verse verse six, Revelation 20, verse six, it says this, blessed are the blessed and holy is he that had part in the first resurrection on such the second death hath no power. So the Bible says, blessed and holy is he that has part in the first resurrection. That's what the Bible says. The dead in Christ shall rise first. So when Christ comes as the first event, and then right after Christ comes, when Christ comes, the dead in Christ will rise. Is that clear? So event number one, Jesus will come. Event number two, Jesus will resurrect those who are sleeping in him. Event number three, what happens next? So Christ comes, and then the Bible says those who are resurrected will go with Christ. Now think about this. If those who are resurrected will go with Christ, that means the dead loved ones are not in the grave. 
The dead loved ones are not in heaven. Our dead loved ones are not in hell. Our dead loved ones are in the grave. And when Christ shall come, those who are in Christ will rise with Christ. Is that clear? So Christ comes, then the dead are resurrected, those in Christ. And the Bible says event number three out of five to start the millennium is that the wicked will be slain. Let's go to 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. 2 Thessalonians. The Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. So here we're seeing that Christ will take his faithful people home with him. And those who have rejected Christ will be slain or destroyed. 2 Thessalonians chapter 1. In verse 7, 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 7, it says, And to you who are troubled, who are troubled with rest with us, when the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels. Verse 8 says, In flaming fire, it's in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that those who do not obey the Lord Jesus Christ will be destroyed by flaming fire. Now, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2 and verse 8 says the same thing. 2 Thessalonians 2 and verse 8, it says, And when the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and, with the, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. So when Christ shall come, the wicked will be destroyed. Is that clear? When Christ shall come, the wicked shall be destroyed. So event number one. We're seeing this from the word of God. Event number one is that Jesus will come and gather his, Jesus will come, that's event number one. Number two, God, Christ will come and gather his people. Event number three, the wicked will be destroyed. And this is why Jesus wants us to leave sin. He wants us to leave our sinful ways. He does not have any desire for anyone to be destroyed. God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to a repentance. Jeremiah chapter 25, let's go there. Jeremiah chapter 25. Again, we're still on the third event, which is the wicked will be destroyed. The Bible says in Jeremiah chapter 25, rather, Jeremiah 25, and notice what it says in verse 31. Jeremiah 25 and verse 31. It says this, a noise shall come even to the ends of the earth. For the Lord had a controversy with the nations. He will plead with all flesh and give them that are wicked to the sword, saith the Lord. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, behold, evil shall go forth from nation to nation, and a great whirlwind shall be raised from the coast of the earth. And the slain, that's the wicked who are destroyed, the slain of the Lord shall be at that day from one end of the earth to the other end of the earth. They shall not be lamented, neither gathered nor buried. They shall be dung upon the ground. So here we're seeing that the wicked will be destroyed. Is that clear? So here we're seeing these things when these are the events. Event number one, out of five, Jesus will come. Event number two, the righteous will be resurrected. Event number three, the wicked will be slain, destroyed. Event number four, what is event number four? The Bible says in First Thessalonians, let's go back there. 1 Thessalonians, five events before the millennium starts. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, the Bible says in verse 16 and verse 17, it says this, For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise First, verse 17, Then we, which are alive and remain, shall be caught up together, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So event number four is when the righteous are resurrected, they will be taken to heaven. Is that clear? So Jesus comes, the righteous resurrect, the wicked destroyed, and the righteous who are resurrected will be taken to heaven to meet the Lord in the air. Let's go to John 14. Let's confirm. John 14, the words of Christ himself, Christ says what he will do when he will come. He will take the righteous home with him. The Bible says in John chapter 14, and this shows us again, that our dead loved ones are not in heaven. For Christ to come and resurrect those who are in Christ from the grave and take us with him, we must be still on this earth. Is that clear? John 14, verse 1 to 3, it says, Let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe ye also in me. And my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. Then it says, and it says, If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare 
a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there ye may be also. So when Christ comes, the, wicked, the righteous resurrected, the wicked destroyed, then he will come and take his righteous people who resurrected home with him. And that also shows us there's no secret rapture. Christ is going to come to take his people. It's not going to be a secret. He will come with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. No secret rapture. Christ will come and he will take us home with him. Is that clear? So Christ comes. The, that's the event number one. Event number two, the righteous resurrected. Event number three, the wicked destroyed. Event number four, the righteous taken to heaven, which leads us to event number five, which starts the millennium. Revelation chapter 20. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says this in Revelation chapter 20 and verse number two and three. It says this. Revelation 20, verse 2 and 3, it says, And he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled, and after that he must be loosed a little season. The Bible says that after Christ takes his people home with him, Satan will be bound for a thousand years. So that starts the millennium, the thousand years that we will spend with Christ. So Christ has to come first. So the millennium did not start yet. It's in the future. Christ will come. After Christ comes, the righteous are taken to heaven. Event number two. Event number three, the wicked will be destroyed. Event number four, the righteous are taken to heaven. And event number five, Satan will be bound in the bottomless pit. Is that clear? All right. So those are the first five events that take place before the thousand years start with Jesus. Now, during the millennium, there are four events that will take place. What are the four event, events that take place, take, takes place while the thousand years are going on? What are the four events that take place during the millennium? Let's go in our Bibles to the book of Jeremiah chapter 4. We're looking at four events that take place during the millennium. Jeremiah chapter 4. Jeremiah chapter 4. And let's notice what the Bible says in verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23. The Bible says this. I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void, and the heavens, and form and void, and the heavens, they had no light. The Bible says that Jesus beheld the earth and it was without form and void. We see that in Genesis chapter 1. It says the earth was without form and void. The word earth is, comes from the Greek word abyss, which means a bottomless pit. So this earth will be the bottomless pit. So Satan will be bound on this earth in the bottomless pit. Pit. Is that clear? This bottomless pit will be during the time of the thousand years when Christ is in heaven, the wicked are dead. We saw the wicked are slain, the first five events, right? So the wicked are dead and slain. No one else will be on this earth except for Satan and his angels. It will be a bottomless pit. Is that clear? So number one, first event during the millennium is that this earth will be the bottomless pit where Satan will be bound. Number one, the earth will be what? The earth will be the bottomless pit. Pit. And while this earth is the bottomless pit, notice what happens. We're going to keep reading Jeremiah chapter 4, verse 23. It says, I beheld the earth, and lo, it was without form and void. And the heavens and the earth had no light. I beheld the mountains, and lo, they trembled, and all the hills moved lightly. I beheld, and lo, there was no man, and all the birds of the earth of the heavens were fled. So the Bible says there was what? No man. No one was on this earth at the time. Is that clear? The wicked are slain. The righteous are taken to heaven. So this earth is the bottomless pit, number one. And number two, there's going to be no one alive on the earth at this time, except for Satan and his Satan and his angels. It says this, there was no man. We're in verse 25. I beheld and lo, there was no man. And all the birds of the heavens were fled. And I beheld and lo, the fruitful place was a wilderness and all the cities thereof were broken down at the presence of the Lord and by his fierce anger. And thus the Lord said, the whole land shall be desolate, yet I will not make a full land. The whole land will be empty. Not one person on this earth. The wicked are destroyed, slain. When Christ came, they were slain and laid on the earth. Is that clear? So number one, this earth is the bottomless pit. Four events during the millennium. The earth is the bottomless pit. 
Number two, there's going to be no one on the earth. Number three, we read it, Revelation chapter 20, verse 2 and verse 3, Satan will be bound on this earth, the boundless pit. So number three is Satan will be bound. He will no longer be deceiving. He will no longer be tempting. He will no longer be trying to get people to sin because the wicked will be dead. The righteous will be in heaven. There's no one to tempt. There's no one to deceive. Is that clear? So Satan will be bound from doing his work. So three events we saw so far. The earth will be this bombless pit. Satan will only be here. No men alive. Number two. Number three, Satan will be bound on this earth. And event number four, what takes place during the millennium to, while we're seeing these four events? What is the fourth event? Let's go to Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20. Revelation chapter 20 in verse 4. It says this. Revelation 20, verse 4, it says, And I saw the thrones, and they that sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their, their foreheads or in their hands. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years or for the millennium. The Bible says John sees that there is a judgment taking place and those who live with Christ for the thousand years will be involved in judging. So event number four during the millennium is that the righteous who have been resurrected with Christ will be in heaven doing a work of judgment. Do you know that if we are saved, when Christ comes, Christ takes us to heaven, Christ is going to allow us to do a work of judgment. Judging who? Judging what? Go, let's go in our Bibles to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians, we're seeing from the word of God what we shall be judging, who we shall be judging, and why this work of judgment is so important. Going in our Bibles, the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 6. 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1, 2, and 3. 1 Corinthians 6, verse 1, 2, and 3. Who will we judge? It says, Dare any of you having a matter against a brother? Go to the law before the unjust and not before the saints. Do you not know that the saints, which is us, by the grace of God, amen, the saints will judge the world? And if the world shall not be judged by you, are ye unworthy to judge the smallest matters? Know ye not that we shall judge angels? How much more the things that pertain unto this life? So we will judge the angels. We will judge those who were in heaven, the angels, before they fell. And God's going to show us the books of judgment, and we're going to say, Lord, you are a just God. We see why those angels were kicked out of heaven. We're going to see those who we thought would make, would make it to heaven, and they're not there. We're going to say, Lord, how come they're not there? And God's going to open the books of judgment, and God's going to show us, their, show us their life. God will show us every time he appealed to their hearts, every time he wanted them to surrender their hearts, every time he wanted them to come to him. And we're going to say, Lord, how come they're not here? And God's going to show us. God, we're going to say, Lord, you are, you, are, you are a just God. You're a fear God. There's going to be three surprises in heaven. Number one, people we thought would be there will not be there. Number two, people we, we never thought would be there will be there. And number three, the third surprise is that we will be there. <laughs> so there will be three surprises and by God's grace we'll be there. And if we are not there, God forbid, but if we are not there, people will look into the books and see why. And the sins we've committed and all these things that we have not confessed and forsaken, God will say, this is why they're not there. I gave them a chance. I gave them a chance. If your pastor's not there, God will show you why your pastor's not there. If your wife is not there, God will show you why your wife is not there. If your husband is not, not there, God will show you why your wife is not there. If your children are not there, God will show you why your children are not there. The Bible says we will judge the whole world. And how unworthy are we to judge the least of these things? But by God's grace, we will be there to judge. And God will show us these things. And at this time, the Bible says that God will wipe away tears from our eyes. There will be tears when our loved ones who we thought would be there will not be there. There'll be tears when those we, we were hoping to be there were not, were, are not going to be there. And those who we never thought would be there, we're going to see them in heaven. It's going to be a, full of surprises. So my brothers and my sisters, this is what's going to happen during the millennium. Number one, we're going to see that this earth will be the bottomless pit. Number two, there'll be no men on this earth. Number three, Satan will be bound on this earth. And number four, the righteous will be with Jesus, judging and judging the whole world. Is that clear? Now, let's look at the six events to close the millennium, to bring this millennium to a close. Revelation chapter 20. Let's go there. Revelation chapter 20. And let's look at verse 5. Revelation chapter 20. The Bible says in verse 5, it says this. But the rest of the dead, they live not again 
until the thousand years are finished. This is the first resurrection. So the Bible says that the rest of the dead, they live not again until the thousand years were over. So the first event out of six to close the millennium is that the wicked, the rest of the dead will rise again. Is that clear? So to close the millennium, event number one of six is that the wicked who are dead on the earth will rise again. So that's the second resurrection by God's grace, which none of us will be a part Accept Jesus. Turn from sin. Don't be a part of that resurrection. The Bible says there's another event. There's six. What is the second event? So the wicked are resurrected. In verse number seven, we see the second event. Revelation 20, verse seven, it says, And the thousand years were expired. Satan shall be loose out of his prison. So Satan was bound on this earth. He was bound, meaning he could not tempt and deceive. But now he's going to be loose because now that the people are resurrected, he has someone to tempt. He has someone to deceive. Is that clear? So he's no longer going to be bound. He's going to be loose. So number one, the wicked, the wicked are resurrected. Number two, Satan is no longer bound. He can do a work of deceiving. All right. Event number three, Revelation chapter 21 and verse one. We see the third event. The Bible says this. And I saw a new heaven and a new earth for the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. So the Bible says that we will see a new heaven and new earth. So the wicked are resurrected. Satan now is number two is going to do a work to tempt and deceive them. As he's about to do this work, the Bible says that the, we'll see a new heaven and new earth. The righteous will be in that new heaven and new earth with Jesus when it comes down. And the wicked will be on this earth and Satan will deceive them. And notice what he's going to do, which leads us to event number four. So the city's coming down, which leads us to event number four. Revelation 20, verse 8 and 9. Revelation 20, verse 8 and 9. It says, And he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together, to battle the number of whom is the, as a sand of the sea. And they went up on the breadth of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So here we see that Satan is going to gather the people together and deceive them as the city comes down, which is event number three. Event number four, he's going to gather the people together and say, we can take the city. We can destroy those people. And the people are going to believe it. The people are going to believe that they see a fiery city coming down from heaven and they can destroy that city. Can you imagine how sinful their minds must have been to believe the devil rather than the word of God? They haven't made it a habit to trust God's word. That's why they believe the devil. And verse number four says that the, the saints will gather these people together and deceive them into thinking that they can take the city. That's number four. Number five, we just saw it. In verse nine, it says, the fire of God came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. So number five is, as they're trying to take the city, the Bible says they're going to be destroyed. Now, the Bible says the fire will come down and devour them. Think about this for a moment. This is hellfire, by the way. Think about this for one moment. If, if I have food in front of me, you have food in front of you. And you want to eat that food and you say, I'm going to devour this food and you, you devour it. You eat it. If you devour the food, is there any more food left? There's no more food left. You devour that food. It's gone. This fire is going to devour the wicked and Satan himself. So this, this fire, people believe that hell's fire is forever and ever and ever. We're going to talk about that one day. It is not forever. It's going to devour them, destroy them. And that's it. Satan himself will be destroyed. The Bible says they were devoured. The Bible says. Devoured, gone, which leads us to event number six. The Bible says in event number six, Revelation chapter 21, it says that God will make a new heaven and a new earth. It says the first heaven and the first earth were passed away and there was no more sea. And I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down from God out of heaven, adorned as a bride adorned for a husband, prepared as a bride, adorned for a husband. And a great, I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he shall dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God. And there shall, and God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. And there shall be no more death, neither sorrow nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. God's going to make a whole new earth. Event number six. So event number one, we're going to see that the wicked are going to be resurrected. This is the events closing the, the, the millennium. We're going to be resurrected. Satan will be loose. 
New Jerusalem will come down from heaven. That's event number three. Satan loose. That's two. That they're going to see uh, Satan is going to. Oh, the, the New Jerusalem will come. That's event number three. Satan is going to gather his people. Event number four. Event number five. They're going to be destroyed. And event number six, we are going to see God make a new heaven and a new earth. Now, you can go back into the, the study and you can go and look at the first four events, the first five events, rather, the, the four events during, the six events to end, and this is how we get the millennium. Now, I cannot leave you in this study with just events. We must have a personal connection with the Lord and prepare for this event. So the Bible says, let's go to 2 Peter chapter 3. We're getting ready to bring this to a close, but I want to show you some practical steps on how by the grace of God we can be with Jesus when he comes. The Bible says in 2 Peter chapter 3, notice that this new heaven and new earth what it will have in there. Revelation, I mean sorry, 2 Peter chapter 3 and verse 13. The reason why Revelation is on my mind cuz we're going to go back to Revelation. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 it says, nevertheless, we according to his promise look for the new heavens and the new earth we're in the of righteousness. So in the new heaven, in the new earth, there is righteousness. There's no sin, only righteousness. It says that there is righteousness in the new heaven and new earth. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that the things, seeing you look for these things, be diligent that you may be found in him in peace without spot and blameless. So the Bible says in the new Jerusalem, there is righteousness. In Jerusalem, there is what? Righteousness. And the Bible says, to him that overcometh shall inherit the new Jerusalem. So I need righteousness to overcome my sin. I need righteousness, which is in new Jerusalem, to be with Jesus there. So I need righteousness first here. And we have righteousness by faith. Now, we receive the new Jerusalem now by faith, righteousness by faith. Faith. That's what the Bible says in 1 John 5 and verse 4. It says, Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. We overcome sin by faith. By faith. Faith is tangible. You can grab the righteousness of Christ by faith. As you study the word of God, you're bringing his righteousness into your heart and into your mind. You're bringing his righteousness into your life. We must have this experience now by faith before the new Jerusalem comes down out of God, prepared as a bride adorned for a husband. Are we experiencing righteousness by faith now? Are we loving the Lord? Do we have a relationship with God? Is his word coming into our hearts and minds, purifying our souls that we may obey his truth? Are we preparing to stand with Jesus when he shall come? Let us be ready. Let us be a part of the first resurrection. If we should die and if we live, let us make it a point to live our lives for the Lord Jesus Christ so that when he comes, we can be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. Let's bow our heads forward to prayer. Father in heaven, we need righteousness by faith. We need the love of Jesus in our souls. We need a deeper relationship with you. When you will come, you will take your faithful children. May you take us home with thee. May you help us to live for you. Take away our sins. Take away the desire we even have for sin as we choose to live our lives according to your word. This powerful event of the millennium, we want to be a part of those who are righteous and go to heaven with Christ. We do not want to be a part of those who are lost. Help us, O oh Father, to choose you this day is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. If you receive the blessing from this message, please share it with everyone you know, your friends, your families, your neighbors, your enemies, your frenemies. Let's prepare to meet Jesus. Jesus is soon to come. We must prepare together. I'm emphasizing we need to prepare together to meet the Lord. Prepare to meet your God is my prayer. Maranatha. Amen.